642 on this Friday. I'm Storm Team 8 meteorologist Lee Spann with meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth. And of course, we're tracking Hurricane Matthew. It's the big story. It's been the big story for the better part of the last week, week and a half here. Now affecting Florida's east coast with the driving rain, some big waves, and a storm surge along the east coast. Uh, yes, we're already seeing the obviously waves that are 20 feet just along Florida's east coast from the Melbourne area up toward Daytona Beach. And we have had word of 100 mile per hour plus winds being recorded on Cape Canaveral where the outer edges of the eye wall are brushing past that east coast of Florida. And we can see the eye wall now with Max Defender 8, a million watts of power scanning from Tampa all the way through the storm. So we are getting a very detailed view of Matthew right now here. Uh, one of the most detailed views you'll see in Tampa Bay. But locally, we're still tracking some showers of our own here. We'll zoom into Polk County, North Northern Polk County, going to get some steady rain here along I-4, Polk City down to Haines City. This will slide through Auburndale and Eagle Lake. Also, a few more spotty showers developing over portions of Pasco, Northern Hillsboro, and back across uh, Hernando and Citrus County as well. But this is all fairly light rain right now. Yeah, we knew we would always be on the drier side of this storm, especially for areas close to the Gulf of Mexico, where, you know, one to enter two was really a high estimate. Mm -hmm. Inland areas like Polk and Highlands County a little bit more. What we also knew was that we would have stronger winds, and this would be more of our impact from it. So when you look at the current wind speeds, 20 mile per hour sustained winds in a lot of places. Look at Lake Placid, 23 mile per hour sustained wind. When you add in the, the gusts, they're closer to 40 in some cases. Winter Haven, a 38 mile per hour gust being recorded right now. So uh, as more and more of you wake up, you head out to work. I know a lot of kids are off of school. That's because of these strong winds that possibly uh, wouldn't allow the buses to go and then some of the schools even being used as shelter. So let me walk you through the rest of the morning. This is around 11 a.m. So Matthew will still be ravaging the northeast coast of Florida and we could still be seeing some heavy rain in places like Citrus, Hernando, Pasco, northern Polk County at 11 o'clock this morning. But as Matthew heads north, we'll be drying out basically from south to north. It will still be really windy but it won't be tropical storm force by the time we head towards sunset. Then as we head into tomorrow, drier air wraps around Matthew and we see improving conditions uh, locally. So for the next 24 hours is the only time we really need to be focusing in on what, what will happen here. Yeah, you see there from the RPM forecast, we are expected to break back into sunshine by tomorrow afternoon as some of that lower humidity, drier air works in. But then this will continue to be a big issue for portions of the Carolinas. As a Matthew, again, it continues to slowly work up the coast. You can see it again there on Max Defender 8. Uh, we have been looking at that eye wall, that uh, inner eye wall there, which is now just brushing by Cape Canaveral, giving them their strongest winds, and by far the strongest winds that we have seen reported out of this system here. We've had gusts 101, 102 miles per hour here, sustained winds at a high level tropical storm force along the coast here, along the I-95 corridor where all of our crews have been reporting, reporting from this morning here. So again, for our area, things are going to start to improve later this afternoon as Matthew continues to move up the coast. There's again another view there on the volumetric imager showing that uh, inner core there, an extremely powerful, still very impressive storm. And, and it still is 120 mile per hour winds that are just offshore. And as of yet, we have not seen the eye come on shore, so we don't have a landfall yet. But unfortunately, those strong winds affecting Cape Canaveral right now, breezy locally, which is causing some issues on the roadways, Leslie. Yeah. I